These are Magtech 24 gauge shot shells. And I am gonna turn these into 577 Snyder rounds. And the first thing we need to do is cut them down to two inch because they are 2.5. So we'll cut them down by a half inch and then we'll anneal them and then we'll size them and then we'll load them up and go shooting. Now I understand that not everyone has access to a giant lathe like this, um, but there are several ways that you could cut these down. Um, just so long as you cut them down to two inch, it pretty much doesn't matter how you do it. You could use a brass trimmer. Um, the way I used to do it is I just took a half inch piece of tape and I wrapped it around so I knew it was pretty square and I just cut it off with a, a cutoff wheel. Um, but this is a lot faster and a lot more bitching. So, things you need here, propane torch, some kind of cordless drill. And what I do is I just chuck my quarter inch drive ratchet in there and that just gives me something to put this over there. So then, I'll just wipe this off here. We'll do that till it just starts to turn color. And I, I like to do it about three quarters of the way up. And go drop it in the bucket. Another one, like that, and it's spinning. Just to change the color a little bit there. Not the end of Be careful not to burn the fuck out of yourself doing this because it can and will happen. And, uh, you know, also make sure you're not doing this with, um, you know, black powder all over the place because, you know, it could explode and you'll end up on the five o'clock news. And that would be embarrassing. So after you anneal them, you know, you, you can see that, you can see that difference in color there. You know, that's, uh, that's pretty much what you're shooting for. Actually, the one on the top, I think, got a little bit more done than this one here on the bottom. But um, that just, uh, that just softens up the brass. So, you know, when you crimp it and you form it, you know, it's not so brittle. One of the things you need to know is if you buy 577 Snyder dies, you have to take this out right here on your press. I don't know about lead presses. This is an old RCBS rock chucker, but you have to take that out. So you could thread these giant dies in there and they are big. So, and so just for comparison, this is the 577 Snyder die next to a 4570 die. So, pretty fucking big. So, now that we've got that out of the way, this um, loading for 577 Snyder is not for the faint of heart as it were. So you have got to use something. You could use spray lube, you could use whatever. I like the Imperial sizing wax. It's what I like to use. Grab you some, put it over the whole thing like that. You don't need to go, you know, you don't need to use an, a, a whole bunch. A little bit does go a long way. And so now we're just going to kind of just ease it on in there all the way. As you can see, it does put a slight, a slight bell on it, just slight. So, uh, for example, I know this one is crushed. I kind of ruined that one, but you can see it is pretty slight. So, 
We'll do that one more time. A little bit of sizing wax there. Get it going on there. And I like to kind of take bites at it. You can hear it, you know, kind of make some, make some noise. I don't like to just slam it down all the way. Kind of get it started, get it rolling. There you are. Looking good. Very good. So, get them primed up, which, uh, whatever way you can. The way I did it was uh, rather unorthodox, and I'd rather not uh, show you. So now we're going to bell that case mouth some. Ooh, yeah, it might be a little on the much side, but that's all right. to chill out on that deal. That is like, holy cow. You just want a little bit, just enough to start that thing, not, to, not enough to park my truck in. Okay, that'll work. Maybe just a little bit more. Okay, now we'll charge them up. So when it comes to charging it up, you know, you can buy all of this stuff, you know, 24 gauge, um, you know, nitro cards, cushion wads, all of that stuff. It's probably a good idea. Um, I like to run 65 grains in these. So I have my homemade powder here. This actually is about 70 grains, but that'll do. So, but if you look in there, there's a long way down before it gets to that. It's only about to probably there. So you need some kind of cushion wad or something to go on top of it. Because if you were to just seat that, seat that bullet right there, you'd have well over a half inch worth of charge. Also, being a hollow base bullet, you, you want to have some kind of some kind of flat flat uh, base there. Nitro wad. Cushion wad. And again, this is all just to take up space in the shell. Oops. <laughs> I reckon you could use the sizing wax for a lube, but it probably wouldn't notice or care. So, get your bullet lubed up there. Seated in that shell there. Send it home. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's just beautiful. Look at that right there. So my standard load for 577 Snyder is anywhere between 65 and 70 grains of powder and a 585 mini ball. And there's a lot of videos out there. You see guys shooting Snyders with a standard 575 mini ball, and they don't get very good accuracy. But So if you use a bigger projectile, um, it really makes a difference. And so I decided I would try an experiment and I loaded up some 
Snyder rounds that were 120 grains of homemade powder and a 575 mini ball, which is the same mini ball that I use in my P58 Enfield muzzle loader, nice. um, with no filler, no card wad, anything, just 120 grains of powder, which comes almost to the top, and slam that mini ball right on top of it. And uh, my my theory was, you know, if if that worked well in a muzzle loader, why wouldn't it work in a cartridge? You know, I've heard people say, and I said it earlier, that you want to have some kind of flat base underneath your bullet. Well, why? You know, you, you don't have that going on in a muzzle loader. So I figured I'd uh, give it a try, and I thought with that extra hefty charge, it might it be able to expand that. Uh, that bullet a little bit to get it to grip the rifling. And I was actually pleasantly surprised it did function very well. Um, but man, did it recoil pretty bad. This here was the first shot with the 120 grain 575 round. And you can see it, uh, it kicks pretty good, but it shoots pretty well. I mean, I'm, I'm shooting offhand at 65 yards and I could hit that 18 inch steel gong pretty consistently. Um, but it is a lot more pleasant to shoot the 70 grain rounds. Fucking A. Yeah. <laughs> okay, ready? Okay, here he goes. This last yeah. shot here at the gong just catches the bottom edge of it. Um, but both of these loads were pretty much hitting point of aim. The 120 round did hit a little higher. Um, I had three rounds left and I tried to hit this jug at 75 yards and I just couldn't quite get there. So I decided to get out old reliable and uh, made pretty quick work of that jug. <laughs> one shot, one kill. So there you have it, folks. That's how you make 577 Snyder ammunition out of 24 gauge brass shot shells. As you can see here, my particular Snyder still is uh, pretty rough looking. I, uh, I just didn't want to spend a bunch of time cleaning it up and making it look presentable if I couldn't make it operate and shoot halfway decent. Um, nice. But seems to shoot pretty well, so maybe we'll work on making it look presentable now.